I've found over the years that a number of my students who are very smart and have gotten to be juniors or seniors in high school still have difficulty with being able to use a ruler because when they were little they were introduced to metrics at the same time as they were introduced to English measurements and there's still some confusion that's continued on through their educations. So this video is for them and the future students that I might have who need a little brush up. We're going to talk about eighths of an inch today. A lot of people look at a ruler and get very confused by all of these lines. What do they all mean? Well, I'd like to explain to you what they mean, but first we need to understand that when we look at a ruler we need to find out where zero is because on a good ruler like this one the zero will not be at the end the reason why I say a good ruler is because if you have a cheap ruler and the zero is right at this edge and this edge gets worn down you don't actually know where zero is so this being a good ruler starts the zero inland from the side which means that we definitely have a point that we can start measuring at. So this big line here is zero. And just like when you go to the bank and open up a bank account, the second you open it up, it doesn't have any money in it. You need to actually make a deposit in order to actually have some money in the account just like you need to start moving to the right on a ruler in order for you to have some measurement. Now you need to keep in mind something that people tend to get confused about. These marks aren't actually measurements. It's the space between the marks that we are measuring. The reason for these lines is to separate the spaces which are actually moving us further and further up the ruler. So most of my students understand money, and so I like to start by talking about the inch as if it were a dollar. So we're going to call this a dollar. Now over here, you would have no money, and over here, you would have a dollar. So what happens if you were lucky enough to be able to have half of this dollar in your pocket? Well, you would have half a dollar. What do we call half a dollar? Well, that's certainly easy enough. We call it 50 cents. Or we might have a 50 cent piece, which is worth, of course, half a dollar. And you notice that the lines here are pretty long because they are big increments of an inch. Let's go on. Now, let's say that you have this 50 cent piece but you don't want to really carry around that big coin. So you might go in and ask for change. If you ask for change, you would probably ask for the 50 cent piece to be broken in half. So what is half of 50 cents? Well, half of 50 cents is obviously 25 cents. So if we go to the next biggest line, which would be right here, that would be a quarter. We're a quarter of the way. We've gone halfway between zero and the halfway mark. So here we have zero money. Here we have 25 cents, or if you prefer, a quarter. Here we have 50 cents, or if you prefer, a half a dollar. And then if we go halfway between the half and the full dollar, we would have what? 75 cents, or if you prefer, three quarters. So now when you think about this inch, it becomes a little bit easier because we have one quarter, two quarters, which is 50 cents, three quarters, which is 75 cents, and four quarters, and so we have a dollar. So if you can think about one inch as if it were a dollar bill, you've come a long way toward understanding. Now, the question becomes, what are all these extra little lines all about? If they weren't there, it would make the inch so much easier to understand. But they are there, and the truth is that it's not really hard to understand them. You just need 
to listen now. We're going to see how many spaces there are in this inch. Because remember, we're measuring spaces, we're not counting lines. Okay, so right here, we're at zero. Now we're one, two, three, four spaces over, five, six, seven, eight spaces over. So that's why they call this inch divided into eighths because there's eight spaces between zero and one. So this is a ruler that in some cases you'll actually see it. It says on the ruler eighths. If you don't see that, all you need to do is count the spaces between zero and one and you'll know whether you're using an eighths inch ruler. Isn't that easy? Now just to make sure that you can actually measure an eighth, let's do this. Zero, of course, means no measurement. When we get to the first mark, that would be one eighth. When we get to the second mark, that would be two eighths. But nobody would call it two eighths because two eighths is just not the proper way to refer to that. Of course, two eighths equals what? I'll give you a second to think about it. Right, one quarter. Does that sound familiar? One quarter. Indeed. Let's move on. This is three eighths. It's three eighths because we've come one, two, three spaces over. And now we're here. We're at four eighths. But no one would refer to that as four eighths. What would they refer to it as? If they reduce the fraction, the answer would be right. One half. And once again, there we are back at the half dollar. Now let's move on. Now we're continuing on to five eighths, six eighths. Uh oh, no one would call that six eighths because they would reduce it. What would they reduce it to? Of course, the answer is three quarters. And if you had three quarters in your pocket, what would you have? 75 cents. And then we have seven eighths and finally eight eighths. So if you have eight eighths of a pie, I'm drawing a pie now and I've divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you had eight eighths of a pie, you'd have a whole pie. Just like here, eight eighths gives you a whole inch. Four eighths, of course, gives you a half a pie. So if we had one, two, three, four pieces of pie, we would then have, let me erase it for you, we would then have only half the pie, four eighths of the pie. If we had only two eighths of the pie, we would have only 25% of the pie, or once again, a quarter. I hope that finally you understand. If you have any questions, ask your teacher or go back and rewatch the video. Hope this has helped. Bye.